Kathy, thank you for being here. Like I said, um, Shane talks in one of the podcast episodes with you about just perseverance, just that you didn't give up. So I can't wait for you to share your path. Um, and I'm going to stop talking now and I want to hand it over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Dylan. I am so excited to be here and thank you so much, all of you for being here for letting me be part of your dinner time or your lunch time or just a little bit of your entrepreneurial journey. This is where it all started for me in these flip lifestyle phone calls. So I'm Kathy and I help middle school math teachers with lesson plans and resources so that they can teach with ease and still have a life outside the classroom. Uh, so as Dylan mentioned, I started in 2016. It has been a journey to say the least, but now I am out of the classroom and I run my online business full time. Uh, so I started in 2016, the summer of 2016, really just creating my product, which really at the time was seventh grade math resources. All my stuff was super ugly, super basic, but they got the job done. So um, shortly after that, I, I uh, Kajabi didn't exist. I know many of you are on Kajabi. So at that time, Kajabi didn't exist. So all my stuff is on WordPress. My blog is on WordPress. I started my blog. And most importantly, I started my email list right from the beginning. And I got my first member within the first, I don't know, three months or so. But then he quit like a month later. And he told me that my materials were a little bit too hard for his students. So, okay, I'll just keep on trekking. So I didn't get another member until probably like six months later. And in that time, I just kept putting out blog, blog blogging is really my main pillar content. So whatever that is for you, whether it's podcasting videos, for me, it's blogging. It still is blogging to this day. And so I just kept on, I kept on keeping on. And in 2018, so two years later, Shane and Jocelyn held their very first live event in Nashville. And at that time I had about 40 members and it was really pivotal here because I got to be in a room with some of the other mentors that you may or may not know, like Kevin Depew. Um, my personal hero in the online business space, her name is Jeanette Stein. She's also like an OG, you know, giant success story. Jeanette changed my life because she was also an educator. She had six kids and was still able to build her online business. And so I got to meet her. But at that live event, I felt like so out of my league because I only had 40 members and all of these people, you know, had hundreds and hundreds, but I could see what was possible. And so after that, I was like, yes, we're going to keep going. It was like September, 2018 in 20 or in November of that same year. So two months later, um, my, there was a mass shooting about 10 minutes from my school. Um, 12 people died in that mass shooting, including my god, my god brother. A week after that, so like now my life is like slowly falling apart, <laughs> very slowly. And week after that, uh, my husband was scheduled to go in for brain surgery because of course he was. <laughs> he had um, something called a cavernous angioma growing in his brain. He was having these like weird seizures. And so that was happening. Um, and a few days before the surgery, my school shut down because I live in Southern California and there was a giant fire that broke out in the, in, on the mountain right behind my school. If you've seen on the news, these giant fires are like, yeah, that's horrible. That will never happen to me. That never would happen to where I live. And that's exactly what I thought. Um, so my school shut down for the night. I was pretty 
like, I really didn't know what to do because I was in this, like my life was falling apart because I just lost somebody. My husband has to have surgery. I am a, I'm a full-time teacher still. And if you know anything about teaching, if you have a teacher in your life, you might know that teachers don't take days off. Okay. When I left teaching, I had over 300 days of sick days because I did not take days off because it's more work to be gone than to write sub plans, make all the, have all your materials ready for a sub to prep your students. Like it's so much work. When you hear a teacher say that it's true. Okay. Like they're not exaggerating. So my husband's surgery was supposed to be on a Friday and I was sitting there thinking, oh my God, okay, how many days could I realistically take off? All right, I'll take off Friday and I'll probably take off Monday, but I'll be back Tuesday because I can't take off more than two days. Like I would never be able to take off more than two days. Not that my principal wouldn't be okay with it. It was me, like it was me that just felt like I could not leave my class. I could not leave my students. And, I, you know, and so I was sitting here like thinking, oh my gosh, like so, I don't want to use the word thankful that this fire happened, which shut down school, but I was so thankful to God that possibly my school could be closed on those days where I had to be absent. And actually my school ended up being closed for 10 days, which historically in my 13 years of teaching has never, ever happened outside of COVID. Okay. Um, and so it, I was in this moment of like, wow, something is really wrong here. If I am thankful that this fire shut down my school, but it allowed me to be at home with my husband for 10 days after his surgery. And thankfully, because he had um, like, some complications after the surgery, we had to go back to the hospital and I, he would have possibly died at home if I hadn't been there to be able to drive him to the hospital. I thank God if he's fine now, in case you're like on the edge of your seat thinking what's happening to him, um, he's fine now. But at that time it was like, we had to talk about what, what do we do if you die during the surgery? What if you, what do we do if, if you, you know, there were complications and I had to pull the plug, do I pull the plug? Like we're, you know, are young in our marriage. And we had to have this conversation about death and it was insane. And it's like mass shooting school, like just, it was so crazy that I just knew that I wasn't ready to quit teaching at that time, but I knew that I needed an option, right? Because options are always good. So 2019 came, Shane and Jocelyn had their live event again, this time in Kentucky. And I was at 140 members. I grew my membership about 100 in that year. And I still felt like not good enough. Like these people are big time. They have hundreds, thousands of members. And I'm just here with my measly 135 people. And I know I say that not because I understand that it was, it's a, that's a lot of people. And at that time I would have given anything when I first started to have 135. But I just, you know, like, you're just always on this. I just always felt like I need more. I need more. I need more. It's never, never, ever, ever good enough. And, you know, but it's okay. So I kept going to 2020 came this weird, the school was like, mm, something's going on. We're going to close for a day. Principal is going to come back and let us know. All right. We're going to close for two weeks. And then we all know that, you know, school ended up being, for me anyway, school ended up being closed for two years in that time. Um, so school closed March of 2020 and the month before, so February of 2020, I went with my husband. I was doing um, in Northern California, a teacher conference where I was a, like a vendor at the show, not, not the show, <laughs> a vendor at the conference. And this just, you know, there with my materials. And I told my husband on the way home, I think at the end of this year, I'm going to think about maybe not coming back next year. I'm going to finish out this year. I'm going to think about it because maybe, and my husband has always been so supportive, but he was like, oh my God, like, how are we going to afford for you to quit your job? Like, that's like, ugh, we can't do that. I'm like, just watch, 
just watch. I'm going to do it. And so 2020 hit, we all, you know, went into hibernation and I kicked it into high gear because I knew I was in this. I was going to distance learning like everyone else. And I delivered I, my whole business, not my whole business, but I added a whole nother section of my business with digital resources because that's what teachers needed because that's what I needed. I created brand new stuff and it took a lot. I moved my entire membership over so that to a new system so that it would be a lot, I don't know, better, better of an experience. And then that summer, I decided to take a leave of absence because I wasn't ready to fully quit. I wanted one foot in the door and one foot out kind of thing. Um, and so I, I took a leave of absence in 2021. And then that would be at the end of this past school year, no, last school year, I decided to finally quit. So this is my first, I just finished my first year out of the classroom as a resigned teacher. Um, and it's been crazy because in 2020, my membership grew from one, I don't know, 130, 140 to over 400 in a year. And that, I know that in this online business space and on the interwebs, you see all the time people say, I, you know, opened my business and then I got a thousand members and I made a million dollars. And and you think you read that and you're like, wow, that's amazing. I want that. But for me, I know, I know for me personally, if I would have opened up my membership in 2016 and got 400 members, my business would not have made it. I probably would have failed all of those people because I was not fully equipped, like mentally, emotionally, did not have the experience to deal with that. Does that make sense? Because you only know what you know. And when you're at the, when you're new at this, like, you know, nothing, which is okay, but you need to have, you need, you know, like you need to be in it. You need to test things. You need to fail at things. You need to succeed at things to really make your business, your membership and the experience for your members a super good one. And you don't know what the experience is like for your members until people are in it and that they can tell you and you can get that feedback. It's been a journey because I don't have that story of it took me six months and then now I make a million dollars and I have 10 million members, but you know, it's taken me five plus years and you know, we're now at hundreds of members. I'm not a millionaire, but I, you know, like it's been wonderful. I was able to leave teaching when I was ready to leave teaching. I miss it dearly, but to be honest, I don't think I'll ever go back. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, that's who I am. I, it's been incredible and just know that if you are in this right now and you're like, oh my God, the people aren't coming. Why is this so hard? This, you know, like I should just give up now. <laughs> it's okay. You're not alone. You are exactly where you need to be. You're exactly where you need to be. You're here on these amazing calls. And you're, it's just going to get better from here because you are putting in the work. And I'm here to tell you, it's, it's possible. It is hard because if it was easy, everybody would do it, but it's possible. And it's amazing when you get your business to where you want it to be. It's so hard because you have people in your life are like, what are you doing? That sounds stupid. Or like, what are you doing? Like, no one's going to buy that. Like, Get those people out of your life, okay? Be with these people who know what you're doing, who know what you're talking about, who know the lingo, who get what you're doing and get to that hundred, get to 500, get to a thousand because why not you?